Really? Do you want to lead us in the pledge? Yeah. Ready? Okay. We're at nine o'clock. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Roll call. Benny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Craig Scott. Yes. Item two, approval of the agenda. Any additions or corrections to the agenda, Commissioner? Uh, I was hoping to can I sure if gets here, we can talk a little bit about the posse and uh, the structure and things like that. You want to add that under 4A? Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I'm just going to be here. Okay. I do want to announce I have to leave at 1045. So, okay. and Commissioner Simmons will have to resume the meeting. I have to leave at 1115. Okay. okay. Let's see if we can get. You were supposed to tell me this stuff before I, I have <laughs> uh, Any other additions or corrections? Do we want to discuss the budget or anything today? I don't foresee where we're going to have time. Huh? I don't foresee where we're going to have time. Probably not. Well, we'll put, put it down, down there. Let's put it under D. So whatever we don't D? get to, whatever we don't get to today, we'll make sure it's added on for the next committee the whole. Yeah, I've already asked to put it on the next committee. Well. Okay, we don't get it to it today. It will be on the next committee. Yeah, but let's put it under D for right now. Sure. Anything else, guys? Just going on there one more time. No, looks good. Item four, public comment. Any public comment? In the room, any public comment on the phone? <laughs> Item four, it doesn't look like the sheriff's quite here yet. So uh, 4B, Brett Gildner, County Clerk, related to a personnel acknowledgement. Um, I'm going to ask my staff to come over here real quick. They should be on the way. You guys ready? I've got some questions to ask too. Yeah. You're not ready? Sure, it's officer. Right in. So we're going to go back to Brian Gilbert Sheriff Stellar Service Agreement. Let me walk right up here. <laughs> Bad. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Uh, this is a contract, a generalized contract for telephone services for the jail. So Stellar is the group that does our commissary and uh, video conferencing and all that other type of stuff. They now have telephone service. So we're going to transition over to Stellar for the telephone service at the jail. Um, we were using NCIC, which is just kind of like a subgroup of Stellar, because when they first signed up for Stellar back in 18, they didn't have the technology for video or cell phone. They got video first on video. Now we're going under telephone is what we're going to move everything under one umbrella. So there'll be one point of putting money in instead of two or three the way it's been years. So inmates family yeah, talk in. a little bit louder. So you... inmates family comes in, wants to put money in instead of having to pick one or two different avenues for that money to go and all go into one bank. And they use that money in the inmate for video, video visitation, phone calls, taxes. And how does the money get in there? The, the family deposits it. Just like a bank. So there's a kiosk out in the uh, lobby of the jail. <clears throat> so they go in there and they deposit money right through that kiosk. And it goes to the account to the inmate. And the inmate uses that for e-cigs, pop, making phone calls, video visitation, all that type of stuff. So this is just a contract to get the phone service under the same umbrella with Dollar. Uh, there is no cost to it. Um, we look at the appendix sheet, it's 15 to 18 cents profit from each phone call that's made. So the commissary stud there, everybody at the jail has told me they're more than happy with Stellar. Uh, Stellar allows them to do what we're currently doing as far as the pop sales, the e-cigs, 
that. So that will all go through that stellar. It all now will be under the same stellar umbrella instead of this NCIC, which is the it's a subgroup. It was like they subcontracted with them because they stellar didn't have telephone service up until now. So I'm understanding was it said the, the provider, which is stellar. Correct. Will forward monthly payment to the county on or about the 30th day of starting. So that means whatever part belongs to the county, they will send. It'll all be part of the commissary revenue because Stellar allows us to keep the profits and then they'll forward any other revenue that is gained off video visitation telephone to the county. It says um, payment shall be equal to 50% of the gross revenue originating from the facilities, not to include taxes and debt. What's all that about? The 50%? Yeah. Where was that at? That I'm not sure. I just was going by the, the last page and I checked with Nicole, who's our administrative assistant over there, and she pointed me to this last page that it's per minute uh, profit of 15 to 18 cents is what they reimburse. Okay, it says under payment for SIDNET voice data, it says the provider will forward monthly payment to honor, honor about the 30 days starting room. Very not to include. Was that 50 percent? Okay. Payment shall be equal to 50 percent of gross revenue originating from facilities, not to include taxes. What does that? What What does that mean? That I don't. I I, I can't because I'm just going by this last page and it says. Well, that, you have to go by the whole contract. You can't go by just the last page. Well, I understand that. So, but what if you don't know what that means, what page? Uh, page two B. Yeah. It says. Shall be equal to 50% of the gross revenue originating from the facilities and not to include. So I don't understand what that means. Monthly payment to client on or about the 30th after the initial traffic month, billing cycle to complete waste data forms. Payment shall be equal to 50% of gross. Revenue. Well, I guess I would have to check them with Nicole get verification on that. Um, where we currently stand with it, this was sent to the county attorneys. <clears throat> they made some minor adjustments, just adding Ogemaw County and a couple other things to it. So I have sent that back through channels to Stellar for their review and sign off on the. The adjustments made by our attorney. So between now and Thursday, I can get clarification on B as far as this 50% versus the appendix one, which says 15 to 18, so that we understand what this 50% is. And it's 10% of the funds. The video visitation email shall be equal to 10% of gross data revenues. What, what is that all about? So the data revenues, uh, they charge per megabyte or um, this one page they're talking about. Right. So they charge so much for for that, the usage fee. So to me, ten percent of the gross data revenue. So whatever total data is used that month, it'll be ten percent of that gross data. Yeah, hold on a second. How soon do they want this contract almost ended? Um, whenever we get. I mean, we like to do it next week. If we if Stellar signs off on that. Uh, changes by the attorney, which I don't anticipate they would have a problem with because it's they were minor in nature, just adding Ogemaw County and a couple other things. Our legal team hasn't seen this yet? Yes, okay. they're, they're the ones that made the changes. So they've sent it oh. back to Stellar to have them approved. So we need to talk to our legal team to find out what that 50% is all about? Well, I start with Stellar and Nicole at the jail uh, because they're the ones that operate and deal with it on a daily basis okay. to see if we get an explanation before next Thursday as far as B. I'd appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> just so it clarifies that B on the 50% versus okay. the appendix. I just operated off of this. We're going under the same umbrella, and I got notes from Nicole as far as the service itself with the 15 to 18. So if everything goes through the everything goes through the, this machine, um, how, do we, how do we, how do we know what the totals, total is going to be? How, how do you know that? provider and customer 
know what's going into that machine to know what your payment should be. Nicole works with Stellar and she works with as far as managing what goes into an in, inmate's accounts once it goes out. So she okay. has oversight of the commissary and video visitation and telephone and everything. So okay. she, she's the one that monitors as far as who's putting money in for inmates. And so this is just a phone system between inmates and people calling them. Correct. From just in, inside the, the building of the. I'm in jail. You want to call me? That would be through that system where I wanted to call you for bail money. I would use that phone system to call you and right. say, bring me $500 if you would, please. It's not if you just call up to jail. No, no. That's this a whole is, different thing. That's a whole different thing. Right. This is just. So this 50% looks exactly what it says. It, the, it costs us 50% of all the revenue taken in. Cost us? That's what it looks like. That's what they're going to bill us. They're going to. They're. Uh, Sid, Sidnet voice data phones payment shall be equal to 50% of the gross revenue originating from the facilities, not to include data purchases, prepaid account fees, billing statement fees. And Nicole told me there's no cost to this. This is a service that's part of it. We don't pay for the service. It's paid through deposits and whatnot. We just get a cut of the profit. We, well, that's what I think we're getting, 50% yeah, of the profit. The profit. It might be 50% or it could be, like I said, on this. Well, that's what it looks so like. They're the the other, so they're going to get the other. I'm sorry. So they're going to get the other 50%. We just need further clarification on that. Yeah. That's a Because they're going to get 50% of the commissary you? revenue. It's not commissary. It's, they're strictly talking about in B the voice data and whatnot. The commissary money comes in. And, okay, and I see. We reimburse that. So like the pop is purchased in-house, but they allow us to sell it through their system. Other uh, groups that do this similar type of thing don't allow that type of thing. As far as purchasing your own pop, you got to buy it right from a vendor. There's not that same margin of profit. Uh, the e-cigs are a similar thing as far as the profit that's being made on the e-cigs as far as cost versus what they're paying for. That's why I said the, the jail personnel and the administration are very happy with Stellar there. And I think we're seeing the benefits of that when you see the commissary numbers every every month and every fiscal year. So, so basically it's the, the inmate that's paying for everything and then <clears throat> sitting there just providing this service. Basically, they're let, letting them set up the service in our jail for the inmates and families to use to maintain communications. You can just get clarification on that 50%. Other okay. than that, I don't see there being an issue. What it looks like to me is they just take 50% of the cut. I mean, it doesn't cost us any money. They're going to make a profit, they're, too. They just, of course, yeah. Yeah, I was, this last page says 15 to 18 cents per minute, uh, you know, how that relates to the 15 per 50 percent, but I'll get clarification. Oh, that. yeah, a phone call might cost 36 cents, 30 to 36 cents. It costs gross revenue. They take half. We get 15 to 18 cents out of it, the other 50 percent. Well, for this home phone call, the inmate has to pay for it, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. The taxes and everything. Everything. See, okay, I got it. One dollar per transfer to inmate phone time, thirty cents for a megabyte on data, and that's ten to fifteen cents for email, and forty to fifty uh, per minute for external video visitation. So those are the charges initially. Take it. You have a, a a personal computer there that they can email people they have access to a, a particular system that's set up that they can send email text messages right uh, then they so put them in front for video visitation um yeah some people would probably rather email than phone call or oh yeah yeah well email attorneys or the you know, family sure. members type of thing go back and forth and, and it comes out of their account whatever money went into that kiosk correct yeah, and I see the kiosk is all credit card, no cash, nothing like that. No credit yeah. card or debit card. Yep. Deposit so in the, the, the family walks in inside the building, goes up to the kiosk, puts their credit card in there, selects how much money they want to put in that account, and zap it's paid for. Correct. Yeah. And and this company is just taking the money 
automatically and not sending us a bill. Right. It's yeah. just I'm providing a service. For that. Kind of like, kind of like, used to have pay phones. If you can get just the clarification. You put money in it and the, I'll get clarification on the okay. money. Other from than, Nicole and okay. them or All right. I need to, and then I'll send an email. Other than that, are you guys okay putting this on for next week as long as we get clarification? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Scott, oh, don't go anywhere yet. Commissioner Scott had some questions on the posse. Yeah, I don't know if the sheriff wants to chime in too, but just um, what's what's our posse force right now, people wise? We've got three active. And we got like three or four that's not too active. Okay. We're, we're three deep right now. That, we, and we're not, we're having a hard are time. Are we advertising? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're having a hard time getting people to volunteer. I see you're advertising for corrections officers. I, just, I think posse is a great thing to have. Just want to make sure that they're they're covered. They're covered under, uh, Tim, I think you and I talked, they're covered under the county policy. But I think we we need to make sure that we got their names and all their information and everything like that. And uh, uh, do they they drive our cars? Are they signing up on that waiver for the insurance no, company? Like we did. I'll I'll double check. Yeah, we need to make sure just cover the driving CYA. policy. I mean, we check them, we vet them before they're allowed to be active posse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I um, hope so, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm almost sure, I don't think I put them through the paces to sign that driver's policy yeah. thing. I didn't yeah. even think of that one. Yeah. Just, and then I just want to make sure that they're they're covered in case they get hurt or anything like that. Well taken care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I mean, they're wearing the uniform that's representing the county. Sir, uh, I had a question last night at the one of my townships um, about what the the inmates are. Are they doing road? I, and I I know you had reported to us. Are they doing road pickup? Is that what they're doing? Yes, that's what I told them. Yes. Okay, are they doing? They want to know if they were doing anything else. They thought it was great. They seen them out and about. No, nothing else. Okay. Just I saw them on M fifty five and Dam Road yesterday. Two of them, one on each side of the road, and the officer was right there behind them. Is that going good, Sheriff? Going. I think that's great. They got probably, I, I forget how many, it's in my report, uh, the jail report that I had shipped off to the at the very bottom, how many miles they covered, plus they did another probably 10 yesterday. Yeah, oh. it's going well. Do they get credited days? Yeah. Days off? Yeah, they're actually trustees that we use to we pull them out of the, the, the work that they be do. more like full time prisoners. I'm sorry, <laughs> the full time prisoners, like repeat guys or something. No, 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 the ones that they have to meet a certain classification so they can be a trustee to do that type of thing, and then they earn credit for whatever they do to uh, days. the other side of their hours and days, shorter days, shorter days. Right. To, yeah, there's how, a whole how system. long was that program inactive? Uh -huh. It's been a couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah, it was COVID because COVID shut it down big time. Um, but I think it was it was struggling before that. Yeah, we, I never even started to get off the ground with COVID. We're probably into it like a month now, probably a month. With some questions. Okay, mm -hmm. thank thank you very much. Okay, we can go now. Yes, can go now? please. <laughs> uh, Bryce, <laughs> personal acknowledgement. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brett Kildner, your Ogemaw County Clerk. <clears throat> There's a lot that goes into making smooth transitions when changing from one program to another or building programs from the ground up. These things don't just happen overnight or on their own. Tracy Turner, Ogama County Chief Deputy County Clerk, joined our staff in late 2020 when Karen Piglowski was preparing to take the office of Ogama County Treasurer. With Tracy's years of previous experience in accounts payable, human resources, and payroll, she was the perfect fit for this office. During this time, the state of Michigan was requiring transitioning to a new chart of accounts for governmental accounting purposes. 
Along with the chart of accounts conversion, the county also implemented new financial software for general ledger and accounts payable. This was a challenging and time-consuming task. Tracy championed the difficulties encountered with this transition. Since mid-2021, Tracy has been a key player involved in building and customizing the NovaTime system, an automated employee time and attendance software package. She has spent countless hours on this project to get to the point we are today. Her dedication to finding and tweaking the bugs should not go unnoticed. The close to seamless integration of this program couldn't have been done without the effort she put in. She has assisted multiple department heads in training to ensure complete utilization of this program. In 2022, Tracy also merged four out of the five unions employees to a new health insurance carrier. Tracy has been selected two years in a row as an Okemaw County representative to attend the MERS retirement conference. She has gained a magnitude of information to help other employees as the human resources department for our county. She has definitely put in great effort into helping bring Ogma County to the position we are today with the capabilities of our software programs. I'm honored to have her as my chief deputy and cannot thank her enough for all of her efforts. Please accept this award of appreciation on behalf of the Ogma County Clerk's Office. And my winter bag. Oh. Ooh, nice. So it reads an appreciation of all of your hard work and dedication to Ogemaw County. Thank you, Tracy Turner, Chief Deputy County Clerk. And you plug it in and it lights up. <laughs> so thank you for everything you've done because I can tell you that this county would not be in the position we are without a, all of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when I turn in, I'll get a picture of you with your award. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 this is your moment. I'll get a picture for my birthday. I'm giving you an award. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Brett. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Michael, did you? Did you yeah. I Congrats, Grace. Thank you. Thank you. I did walk in. Did you have some? Are, I mean, did you want to be put on somewhere? Like okay, under? You can, do, you can do that. I've got something quick to cover with you. Let's put them on. You want, you want to slide on up? Sure. I think I got the email. Oh. Is this it? Uh, it was good news. 75% reimbursement? So, yes. It's gone through. Yeah, after I just told you how many days ago, it, this is not happening till fiscal 2025. It does appear we just talked about the um, that uh, we will be getting 75% reimbursement for all in-home care services for fiscal 24. We don't know the scope. We don't know the parameters of what's going to be allowed to be submitted at this point. Um, my understanding is all of the regulations that are going to be required in order to do this are going to come in fiscal 25. But they're letting us do it this year kind of without those parameters and then educating us on what those parameters need to be. And there, there are some things with quality assurance that seem to be a little bit fuzzy that the, the various associations that we belong to don't know kind of what those, what's going to happen with those. But in some capacity, we're going to get 75% reimbursement. We're hoping for things like the big partners and change bills that we see for yeah. um, for those things that are, that are going to increase that keep kids in the community, um, that are evidence-based. Um, so again, I just don't know if it's going to include the whole slate of the in-home care program, which if you look at our budget, um, includes all of the salary of all of our employees and, and, and all, all of all, all of those items. I don't know what I'm going to be able to include for that 75% reimbursement, but it's going to be some, which is going to reduce your appropriation that we've submitted as part of our, our fiscal 24 budget. So I don't want to hazard a number, but it, it'll be some. Yeah, I just got this email yesterday. Um, Fifty yeah, percent for out for out of home yeah. services is going to remain the same, but the seven that's excellent news. Yeah. So any residential treatment, any um, any secure detention that will remain at fifty percent. But anything that we can do, yeah. their hope I think is going because we're struggling with having places to put people that it will give us additional funding. Keep to some here. to to keep them here and to grow those programs to keep them here to make sure that we have everything we need here because there's no place to put them. <laughs> so. Oh, I tell you, Detroit Free Press had a big article uh, a week ago about Northern Michigan and the lack of juvenile detention. Mm -hmm. 
and they touched on Travers, Tra Grand Traverse County and Lebanon, which we talked about in the past. They did not build a facility. They opted not to? No, no, oh. no. They've asked. They can't afford it on their own. So they asked the state for $25 million. Hmm. It has passed the state House Appropriations Committee, but it has not passed the state Senate yet. Okay. Uh, they have not built it. We were told that we they did build it. And we were told they spent the money, but no, they did not. And they didn't, they weren't going to spend their own. Yeah. So, but there is, there's a lack of juvenile detention in northern Michigan, mm -hmm. especially northern Michigan. There's a lack of residential but, treatment. All too. Over, I mean, it's yeah. it, even trying to find a place where the kids that would would benefit from some treatment. There's Absolutely. a lack of there's a lack of that available statewide, and I, and part of the juvenile justice commission's goal is to look at that as a as a as one of their areas of focus. But in the meantime, they're trying to do these other things to help keep kids in the community. So children and adults. But just wanted to let you know that that's coming. We can't tell you of any hard and yeah. fast rules. So right. sorry, I, I really didn't like lie to you. I was, I, I was, I, we didn't know until Thank you. I, yesterday. I seen you walk in. I thought we had to do some Well, this is, this is just a typical state program. Shell it out. Tell us the rules later. Yes. ARPA, ARPA came out. We went through a year of finding out rules. And I think that's what opiate's going to be. Mm -hmm. opiates just they're saying wow you got this big price tag and a year from now who knows maybe we can tap more of it yeah. at okay. the county level yeah just the rules come later yeah thank you and then um jenny just quickly oh. i'm going to need your signature on that front of the court that we've talked budget that we are contract that we've talked about repeatedly that's going to be coming sometime in the next couple of weeks they Is fixed it? the problem that i talked to you about yesterday that's fixed it's a it's a computer system called eGrams that you have an account yep, for. I do. Um, and so we'll, I'll just get I'll reach out to you, email okay. you, and let you know when it's ready to go. Um, the resolution was already passed. Okay, just text me. Yeah. Let me know okay. when it, when I can find it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. We'll Thank do. you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a Thanks. Good day. Ray Blamer, come on up. Building Basha project. Basha. 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 Thank you, sir. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. How are you? Thanks for coming. All right, Ray. Dream. Nice to see you. Dream. <laughs> um, I guess I was coming here this morning to discuss our repair of our building, but um, we couldn't get a bid for it in time. Um, uh, we we um, met with Gary Miller, and he's he's waiting on the price of steel similar to what you guys put on the annex building. So until that price comes in, he can't really give us a bid on it. Um, I guess the, the talk was is that if we give him the go ahead, he could have that done uh, by September 30th, which is so the money will be spent in this budget year. Oh, well, there's a new building you're talking not No, this is no, our old no. building. You're talking about repairs, and I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Repairs, okay. repairs to our, that have been bad for a long time and just getting worse. And we have a bad issue that's it will take care of that. So, Ooh. yeah. So this is Dacia and Soffit? Yes. To cover up all of the, I believe it's cedar that's up there. and It's all shrunk, and I mean it back and get in it anywhere they want. It's It's just a bad deal, so. It needs to be repaired. And I did get um, estimates mm, two years ago anyway, maybe three. And one was 16,000, one was 12,000, one was 9,000. The 9,000 one was just told me over the phone. And he said, but if we run into stuff, it'll be more. So I took that with a grain of salt. And that, that gentleman's not even in business anymore. So. I assume it's going to go up. The bids will have to go up, but um, I mean that being said, we'll just have to wait and see what he's gonna what the bid's gonna come out to and, and go from there. This is for the re you don't have a bid for the repairs. I'm sorry, are they two years old? Is it? Did I understand that correctly? Yeah, the the, the original bid was two years old, so he he's going to rebid it. Oh, and um and bid it a little differently. Using he was going to use, I believe, um, pole barn steel to begin with, and now he's going to use a different type of metal, similar to what's on the annex building. I don't know what that looks like. I've never looked at it. So, 
So will he be able to do the bid, order the supplies, and do the job by, you said, the end of September? Yes. Oh. It has to be done and paid for by September 30th to um, go into this year's budget. So is this just information for us? You don't need anything from us, correct? Well, if we had the bid, we would, I guess, vote on it uh, next next week, you know, finalize it next at the next um, meeting and, and getting going on it. So, But we don't have the bid. No. Can I, can I Questions? Can I, go ahead. So this kind of got brought up at our uh, transit committee meeting last week. We have a really good opportunity right now that this is money that if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. Um, so this is kind of a you know fast track thing, and we're hoping we can get get this mm -hmm. bid in and this job can get done. So if uh, we can get this this bid, Tim get get things rolling. You know, I just want everybody to be aware of it. It's just a great opportunity for work that absolutely needs to get done. Again, you know, it's all wood fascia around the building. The maintenance alone, there's issues. So if we can get this done, it's just a great opportunity because again, the money is there. And if we don't use it by September 30th, we lose it. If if I don't reach my budget mm -hmm. amount, you gotta send it back. I would have to pay the money back. Or um beforehand, I would not accept the money. But um as it stands right now, if we get this done, um, we'll be close to our, our budget. So so the money's there. Oh yeah. Is there any way you is he can he have that bid to us by next week? I, I told him that I, as soon as you get it, get it to me and I'll send it to Tim so that at least you can see it before the meeting. Commissioner Scott? This was a competitive bid. Oh yeah. No, no, it was not. Well, but initially you, you went to one contractor and looked for a bid. That's all, right? right. So I so it wasn't competitive at all. Well, it was it was in the beginning. When, 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 when was first, the beginning? When, when I first got the three bids, um, I believe it Two was years in ago. early 21, I believe. Why didn't we do the work then? I don't know. It was presented to you. It was voted down? I, I think it was tabled. I really don't know. I, I, don't, just re moved, I don't remember. We just moved on to what money different is things. What is it a grant? No, it's. It's this year's budget money. It's this year's budgeted money. Oh, and and we're we in, we let them. and we're and if and if we don't exp and I budgeted in the repair of this building, and I figured that it, we would be getting it done. But now we're getting so close to the end of the budgeted year, I'm not going to spend that money. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is our money. It's not. This is not a grant that has an no, expiration date. No. So it's, we can commit this money this year and pay next year, right? No. We can commit. What, Go ahead, Tim. What I think Reese is telling you is it's the 5311 money. It's a revenue line that we have for transit. It comes from the state. Oh, well, it does not come from the state. Right. It's not our money, yeah, exactly. Right. right. And these are the state rules that what have means? Ray concerned is well, that if he doesn't spend it by the end of the year, the state doesn't want to give it to us. Okay. Or if we okay. already have it, we have to give it. We have to pay it back. So one other... Um, but you're totally incorrect. It's not grant. It's the state has given us this money. It's, it's not grant money. It, it is... Um, Part of it is state operational right. funds, and they pay us monthly for that based on our budget, the budget that, that was approved by you and, mm -hmm. and the, the state. And then the federal portion of it, um, we don't get that until we've actually spent the money. So all told, it would be 34% from the state and... 36% from the federal government because for this year, they are still giving us um, double what they normally would, which is 18%. That's the whole use it or lose it thing. Right. So if we if we don't spend the money, we're not going to get 60% of it reimbursed. Tim, did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, one other element that would have to go into a resolution if you do it on Thursday is to waive that um, sealed bid requirement, given mm -hmm. the numbers you just uh, have given us. That's just simply a, a note that we would put into the resolution. It's not setting precedent for future. Right. But recognizing the deadline that Ray's working with. Uh, so just for full disclosure, that would be in there. It would therefore make the whole thing move quicker. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the idea was 
to get this under yeah. contract and get it done in roughly what six weeks or whatever. Uh, yeah, we've got to happen. put it out for bid again. It 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 just won't happen. We'd lose it um, because you're right. mid September probably before bids would be. Uh, uh, thir yeah. Thirty four and thirty six is sixty seventy two percent. So we will. For the money that we spend, we will be getting back 72% of that from the state and feds. So, I just add one more. Go ahead. You're on the committee, so, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm the chairman. So, one thing that I, I want to add and we have to remember is you know, we put out to bid throughout the entire state, lower state, for our new construction of the pole barn. And that was a, a good sized job that many, many companies, I, we don't know how many, but many large companies had the chance to look at. They had plenty of time to look at it. We received one bid. Yep. So it's not like there's a ton of contractors out there just waiting for us to come to them to get work. So this, this is. You know, I guess we've tough. got somebody that's willing to do it and can do it now that we, we need to jump on it. Will this fly with, with uh, the state and the feds as far as putting up a bid now? Or. Will they for sure give us that money? Oh, well, certainly. Okay. We already, have the, we already have the money. It's budgeted. That, that's all I care. That's the, all money, I care. the money is budgeted, and we knew that it was going to be at our expense all along to repair the building. It, it's our, our obligation. And then they just reimburse us for eligible expenses okay. spent throughout the year. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, the, the amount wasn't... Uh, no, a well, significant it could, amount. It could be twenty thousand now. Well, we don't really know. Um, you guys, would you like this put on? Uh, well, yeah, we got to put it on. But we need more information. We keep telling all the other departments that they have to follow the rules, and here we are. We're chicken little. The sky's falling at the last minute, and we got to do this. We just, we just scolded the the sheriff's office earlier this year about. The vehicle purchase and not going through all the steps. And, you know, I just don't, this, I don't care if it's you put it out and only one answer is only one answer for the annex building, only one answer for the building across the street. If we just say, oh, we're only going to get one answer, we don't need to bid anymore. No, that's not transparency in government. If we're going to commit to transparency, we got to commit to it. You got to do it. And if you want, you want departments to have rules, you got to have rules. Now we're in, now we're in a tough spot. So yeah, I'll vote to I'll vote to do this. But going forward, we if we're going to have rules, we got to follow them. I agree. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, and I, I agree with you hundred percent. But we do need to keep in mind, um, you know, we do now have a transit committee. And it's a strong committee with people that are very devoted to helping out yeah. the cause, which is going to assist Ray. So we are moving in the right direction. I agree exactly what you said. Right? You know, we are working on making sure that things in the past don't happen again. And I feel confident that's not going to be the case. Yep. Questions? Commissioner Simmons, you're on the board as well. Do you have anything to add? No, but if we can use I don't want to give this money back. And it was was the contractor that going to do this were they the low bid before the no uh, no it wasn't the lowest bid but the lowest bid wasn't even in writing it was just over the phone okay that's all and, I need to know right, and, and that guy's not even in business anymore so. okay it's fine um so if, if we are are we settled on this then because there was another issue that kind of came up this week uh, pertaining to this grant. And was the grant sent to you on your computer? Yeah, I, I uh, you signed it. I signed it. Well, you signed it and sent it back? Yeah. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> so well, I that, contacted me. It was an email asking for my put signature. The bus in your yard, then. Exactly. Well, that's fine. Um, it was for $100,000, and a bus is $172,000 now. So we'll, we'll have to. Come up with the the, uh, the extra money on our own. <laughs> it says slash van here. Um, where do you see that on my agenda? It says bus slash van. Right, exactly. Is it a bus so, or a van? So we we could actually go back 
to the state with this and have this changed to a van, but it's not it's not as simple as that. We'd have to have another um, meeting with the um, the rural task force. It would have to be publicly um, put in the paper. I mean, uh, just a just a mess. Well, what's in your budget to and, buy a bus? And you have seventy two thousand in there. We 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 do at this point, yeah. Oh well, then you. With the grant, you could afford it. Yes. And we discussed this before. Yeah. Buying a bus versus a van. And and um Chairman Wilsey really was against a van. He you know, did you buy a van already? Yes, we did. Yeah. And he was another one. They're they're pretty handy. But but anyway, this came uh yesterday in an email. When the governor signed their um, budget for this year, there was extra money included for transits. So when I put my budget together for 2024, the rate for the state was 34.5849%. With this ad added money, it was, I believe, ARPA funds that the state got that is put into the budget for 2024, it's going to raise the amount that we get from the state to 40.8543%. That's a 6.2694% increase. With our 2024 budget, that figures out to $69,847 extra that we're gonna get next year. So it's a perfect time to buy the bus anyway, because we'll be getting it back. And how much you get back? Sixty-nine thousand forty-seven. It will be an extra sixty-nine thousand. Okay, got it. And these figures aren't, you know, carved in stone, but it's going to be very close. Okay. So that's good news. Yes, Tim. Where's their? Is their budget set? Do they have that? In well, they definitely budget? have enough in their. Um, Fund balance to cover that, no question. Oh yeah, no question of fund. So balance. even if it isn't in the, you know, what's what's been allocated for this year, there's there's right plenty to pull from. But I don't even know how long if if if, if you sign that, I don't know when I'll get it back, and I don't know how long it'll take to buy a bus. So it 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 used to take six months to get a bus. Our van took a year. Um, it may take a year for a bus. Also, we don't really know. Yeah. So we don't even know when we're going to get it. But the money will be, I guess, with this increase, this and this is a this is a one time increase from the from the state. So uh, the money that we'll be getting um, will more than or I'll just cover the added expense of it. So is there anything right now that you need from us? No, other than <clears throat> you will have to vote. I believe to give me approval to buy a bus. All right. And do you have anything to add to that? No, that'll come in a later step. Okay. Spec it out and yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're not sure we're going to go with the company that we've been buying buses from in the past. Ross Common, I think, has tried some different bus companies and, and we might too, you know, just. We there. We're not going to be able to get the smooth-sided fiberglass-style buses that we're everyone's used to. They're just not making them anymore. It'll be a, a steel-body bus, and they has to go. They don't last as long. That's for sure. But no, they don't. How are you doing with drivers and routes? Um, we're good. We um, I'm going to have to hire another part-time um, because I'm going to be losing a full-time driver to retirement. So one of my part-time drivers will advance to full-time status. And and how many hours on Saturday are you guys? Eight playing? hours. Eight hours? Okay. Yeah. So is this bus going to replace a, a current bus? Or yes, it is. And, and that's how the state works. They they try to keep every every transit in, in all of Michigan with, well, how can I word this? 80% with newer buses, 80% of your fleet with fairly new buses. So 
we have buses now that are coming up on 200,000 miles and five or six years old, so they're due to be replaced. So we would definitely um, replace one. Right now we have 14 uh, revenue vehicles and that's all that the state will allow us to have. So when we get a new one, we have to get rid of one. Okay, thank you, Ray. All right, thank you all. <laughs> Item D, James Min Minthorn, Energy Advisor, Energy Efficient Programs. Come on up, sir. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. Just welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Basically, I work for Consumers Energy. Uh, my paycheck, this usually comes out somewhere in conversation. My paycheck says Franklin Energy. Franklin Energy is a company out of Wisconsin. And uh, basically, the uh, energy efficiency program that consumers use is, was put through the legis state legislature in 2009. And part of the rules of the program is that Utilities, DTE does the same thing, Great Lakes Energy, basically name it utility in Michigan. They collect money, we all pay into the system, and, um, and it has to be dispersed by third-party companies. We are one of the third-party companies that does this. I've been doing this for Consumers Energy for six years. I live, I live up here, I live south of Merritt Speedway. Before this, I was in the oil and gas industry for a long, long time. Um, but basically, uh, Tim called me, we met and we discussed this program. Basically what happens is, is as all of you uh, approve Sheriff's office to do upgrades and or upgrades for any of your buildings, mechanicals and electricals. And what I say is if you, if you, if you do an upgrade, always get your utility involved. You have DTE gas here, I, I'm pretty darn sure. And you have consumers energy electric, always get them involved because usually if, if you upgrade mechanicals and electricals, there's money to be paid. And it's a form of a check, it's not a rebate on your bill to the, to the, uh, to the end user. We've heard about the, $50 for your we've all heard about getting $50 for your refrigerator for years yeah for your old it's the same program only I'm I'm the person on the ground for consumers energy and I call on end users um, I'll take you to a website www.c uh, I'll show you a few things here www.what C E. Oh, show. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Let me go back. Bang, right? <laughs> right. C E. Trade Ally. T R A D E A L L Y dot com. You say that one more time after the W, three W's. The letter C, the letter E, trade ally dot com. A L L Y, did you say? A L L Y dot com. This then trade is C E. Tango Romeo Alpha Delta Echo. CETradeAlly.com. I didn't I couldn't keep up with your nomenclature. Is it trade like T R A D E? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I was hearing you right. Yes. I got one hearing you again today. Okay. Trade. C E trade what? Ally.com. A L L Y. A L L Y dot com. Yes. Okay. Okay, at the top of there, there's uh, marketing materials. Yeah. Okay, there's three pages of energy efficiency successes. For examples, it, it, not to labor this now, but it's a place to go and, and look okay. at information. Okay, now go back to the home page, the top, all the way to the left. If you can just. Can you turn that around? So I can... Yeah, but it's only half the screen. Okay. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know why it's on that, but that's what, you, that's what you're looking for, right? So I go www. Da, 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 da. Where's my dot? Okay. I sc I'm just scroll down um, just to here. 
Okay. You see where it says, whoops, sorry. You're okay. You see where it says 2023 incentive application? Yep. Go ahead and hit on that. You, well, you don't have to, but that is this right here. And I'll just, I'll go through this a little bit. Okay. Basically. Username. Do you have to have a login for that? No. No, it's, it's, it's something you can download to any computer. Okay. I don't know why I'm going to do with this. That's the page. Okay. Okay. Basically, here, this might be, you can look online or okay. we'll go to page two. Oh, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, everyone. Yes, of course. Go to page two inside of, this is, these are all of the um, measures, subjects of, or, uh, different things that we incentivize. For example, in variable frequency drives, uh, lighting, lighting, does anyone happen to know what, if Tim, was, is the lighting in here? I, I can't remember why we first met. Was it to discuss lighting? Or we were looking at efficiency uh, improvements for everything. Lighting, heat, installation, windows, shooting match. So, so what I would what I say is go through your normal budget process, your bidding process for any project that you want to upgrade. Your lighting. Apologize, sir. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> We're gonna... Mine's on new. Mine too. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I have three teenage boys. So <laughs> I understand. Uh, your lighting is going to be, if not your lowest hanging fruit, one of your lowest hanging fruits. Uh, if these are, I don't know if these are T8s or T12s, probably I'm going to guess T8 lights. So your wattage in each tube that's up there is probably 30, 30 to 35 watts, and you can reduce that wattage by half. And your lighting, your lighting is probably two year or less payout because basically consumers energy will pay. You, you do your job. We will not pay up front. You do your job once it's completed. Uh, probably your facilities manager, someone's sign. I come here and they sign it, something saying that it's completed. We get receipts. It's a it's a process, and we pay we pay money in the form of a check. There are um, there are also uh, there's a company called Michigan Saves. It's michigansaves.org, where you can. They will consumers energy will buy down interest rates to zero percent for most any energy efficiency project. It's up to it's up to I think per project. Anyway, there's someone that can talk to you about that that works for Michigan Saves directly. I can't remember the the door manufacturer in the center out here. Um, Taylor? Yeah, Taylor. They've gone through the program. Been very happy with it. Yesterday, I was over at Coletta Air over in Oscoda. So do you, you apply for this program before you guys come in and and do a walkthrough? We, we, don't, we don't do it. Okay, assume, we, assume we're told we don't do anything with this. You go do the project. Let us know before you do the project that you're going to do the project. I'll fill out the paperwork. You do the project. We certify, we get it certified that it's done and we pay you money. But what I say is you're never going to do the project for this rebate money. But if you do the project, you want to get this rebate money. That's fair. So have you already done a walkthrough and do you have any information on this building? No. We are, we just in this last couple of weeks compiled all the data that um, this guy's name is Joshua, I believe. He needs to do that analysis, so he's performing that now. Not only the lights, but the gas bills. Turns out, even with uh, transit that's on propane, they can figure out a program. Oh yeah, Joshua yeah. Cockfield. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Joshua who? Cockfield. C O C K F I E L D. F I U L D. F I E L D. F I. Oh, field. Field. You speak very quickly. It's hard for me to pick up. Sorry on. about that. 
That's okay. My brother speaks quickly too. Thank you. Guy, it's a guy thing. So when this we, guy's from consumers? Yes, ma'am. Yes. When we did the walkthrough in July, we also went into the boiler room and some things caught your attention in there right away too. Yes. Um I'm get I'm gonna guess insulation. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what we discussed. Yeah, well, there was uh, something to do with the chiller system as well. And we looked at the boilers. I'm not sure if we concluded there was much to be done there. Uh, but you looked at that big panel and immediately, you know, ideas started uh, coming out when you went just by seeing it, 50 year old panel. So, yes. Well, the, the thing, the thing about this is, is, is there's always maintenance on outside of a building inside. So one, 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 one question that I was, when I was sitting back here, uh, what's the temperature of this room at 2 a.m. in January? I don't know. Okay. So what I- 72 degrees. It doesn't change. Okay. Uh, uh, why not? I, I'm, okay. Well, First off, I'm not putting you on the spot, but why not? Okay. okay. Why, why can't it be 71 degrees? Or can't, why well, can't it be 65 well, degrees? Yeah, I'm just going to say it's it stays the same whether it's 71 or 68 or whatever it stays the same. We looked at a few years ago about closing on on Fridays and then reducing the heat down in for 3 days straight. And of course, we were told by somebody's uncle's brother-in-law that sure. that doesn't work. Sure. That you know, uh somebody come along and said, "Oh, by the time you heat it all back up again, you spend the same amount of money." So we listened to that guy's uncle's brother-in-law and believed it. You know, you probably are going to tell us something that will probably save us something. Well, but that's five years ago, and we've been spending the money ever since. Yeah. Well, well, we have we. Uh, well, what I would do is is um, get in consumers energy involved. Uh, we 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 all are paying for engineers to give their opinions. Consumers energy to give their opinions. Engineers always have opinions, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I have I have a friend. His name's John Namitz, and he works with uh, Munson Healthcare System. That's what he works with all the major hospitals to on our, on their building management system. I mean, if they can save one percent on their utility bills, exactly. I would I would disagree with the brother's uncle because. <laughs> Because what is the number? You I, know, I agree. I agree. Et cetera, et cetera. I agree. I, I guess I was just being a little sarcastic. Well, um, the, that's, that's, it makes sense to reduce the heat when you're not using it. You know, and air conditioning. It makes a sense. You know, you, I go into New Meyer store and you turn the corner and walk down the frozen food and the lights come on when I walk down the aisle. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. They turn off when, when nobody's in the aisle. They come on when somebody's in the aisle. Makes sense. I mean, you were talking about Dollar General store. I was walking into Dollar General store at two minutes to eight. The it was a summer day. The door was open, so you're just going to walk in. And the lady says, "Well, you can't walk in yet. The lights haven't come up yet." So if if a Dollar General store times a million stores can uh, save one minute of light a day oh absolutely per store it's huge um my yard lights are all motion sensitive not because i want them to come on because i want them to shut off because you pay the bill right right <laughs> i want them to shut off and and you know i mean it, it's not rocket science like say just the bathrooms here people go in they turn on a light they leave the they leave the light on when they walk out we'll have them on motion and it'll turn off. Same with the commissioner's chambers. Right. Same thing. So I, I guess where are we at with with the with all of this right now? What what I what I would suggest is I think Tim, you were saying um, you were making a list of you were from Josh at Hotfield. What I would what I would say is okay when you're walking around. Basic suggestion when you're walking around all the offices in in the in the. Building. County yeah. building. County building. Okay. Does does do lights need to be on? Does heat need to be on? Does air conditioning need to be on in those areas? So in my in my mind, what would you like to do? If it was a perfect world, what what would you like to do? Get bids for that. 
and we can take those bids. We don't take all the bids, take the, the bid that you would want to approve it just because, and we can run it through the program to tell you how much money you get after the project is done. Where we are, but the uh, work that's happening at consumers right now with analyzing the usage uh, coming off from those bills, they'll be able to tell us where to focus our attention. And so we were talking about an energy efficiency project for this building. What would it take to bring us to the, the most efficient we could be? This is what that information is going to help determine. You know, they're also focusing, for instance, on the lights on the outside of the building. We have some lights that are big energy users that can be replaced. They'll be able to tell us that and show us this is these are areas that we need to look. We can then prioritize if we need to or just issue an RFP for the entire thing. We've also talked about windows in the building. Uh, if you've been in my office in the wintertime, we get a west wind. The shades, the blinds are moving back and forth uh, because the wind is getting in. So clearly some improvement could be done there. Um, we maybe get our shopping list up and the board may say we don't really want to do this and this, but we want to focus on what it might be. You mentioned the, the chiller system here that it's very dated. It's you know, clearly not operating as efficient as the modern systems do. I can't imagine those things come at uh, low price tags. So, you know, we may be looking at multiple years you know, down the road as we uh, try to bring this up to up date. But the idea, as I remember from our ARPA meeting, was to bring at least this building as efficient as we can. Uh, I've got them looking at transit, too, because while we're looking at that building, we may as well know exactly where we need to make our, our improvements. And so I was very happy to hear that they were able to even look at the, the gas, even though it's propane, they were able to take those bills and will be able to give us some direction. So that's where we are. The programs that Jim is talking about, uh, just in uh, running rough numbers the last time he was here, these are not insignificant rebate, or not even rebates, but uh, payments that the county would receive. So as we go through these projects and we run it through your analysis and look at those numbers, um, I want to encourage you to think long and hard about not just putting this money back into offset a current cost or, or what have you, but put it into a capital improvement fund so that as these projects come up in succeeding years, you have funds there to work with. So if we do have an air handler that goes out someplace, there are funds available within internally uh, that you can feel confident will do that. Another water heater goes down at the jail, for instance. Of course, we have commissary, but just as an example, there's a fund there to take care of. Uh, so this is you know, reaching far beyond just the, the ARPA project that we originally had mentioned. But that's, that's where we are. We need now, uh, we'll get the results from consumers about the, about the energy, and we can begin focusing on areas that uh, you'd like to see bids on, and then we can move forward. I will give you an example. I walked into uh, Vanderbilt Schools. It's a school, I'm guessing, smaller than uh, West Branch here. And uh, they were, I, I, that was a cold call I heard through the grapevine that they were putting in new lights. Long story short, they were putting in new lights of their school, and the bill was 104000 Um I ran the numbers, and we, they were, they want, were putting in network lighting controls. You were, and, uh, and I took them a check for $54,000. Oh. For some projects, we pay up to 50% of project cost. It's not all projects. Uh, some, it might be $100,000 project and you get $3,000. So, Have you did any other county buildings that you're aware of? Uh, what? I haven't. Um, I can check on that. Get back with you. So if if we go for, forward with this, how how long of a turnaround as far as it's four to you usually get a check of about four to six weeks after the project is finished. When the well, what what I say as time goes forward, you're going to do some projects. You, you're going to want to go through the program just because the money's there. We're just in the beginning stages of the program, correct? Right. What's the next step, Tim? So I'm waiting on uh, waiting, but. Uh, We'll wait to hear back from Joshua uh, as he does the analysis. He will be able to focus us on areas that we can uh, maybe get the most, um, uh, what's the word for it, the most return on the investment uh, and maybe tackle those first. And bear in mind, virtually every system that we have in this building is an analog system. There's really nothing that's been automated. So even that alone is going to help us save the energy use going forward. 
let alone this program, but we'll be saving hopefully on the utility bills as well. But that's what, what I need right now is uh, for that list that of course we'll bring to you right away as soon as it's available. And then we'll start focusing on, on what the priorities ought to be. I think the lights, like you said, is a low hanging fruit probably going to happen. That's not a really hard one to do. And I think can, we can see some turnaround pretty quickly on that. What I, what I would recommend on the lights would be, for example, you uh, let's say you're going to replace your lights. You go out and get a bid from an electrician. In my mind, go ask the electrician or your electricians, who do you buy your lights from? Have that person come in here because they live in the lighting world every day. And electricians are wonderful, but sometimes they're working on a motor, sometimes they're working on a, a, a new heater, and then they're working on lights. So they're just going to say, go buy lights and and have and then and then have heck have them set in front of the commissioner and kind of like I walked into Alpena State Bank, okay, Alpena State Bank over in Tawas. And I met with the manager, the same, same situation. And I says, she says, well, what, what do we need to do? I says, well, what would you like to do? You can take out a tube, put up a tube. That's, uh, I don't want to say the cheapest way. It's a, a way to do it. Or take out a fixture, put up a fixture, because you want someone that has a couple million dollars in your bank to say, oh, man, you put up new fixtures. I really love it. She says, well, I want the second one. So they took out fixtures and put up fixtures. And what happens is, is Consumers Energy actually says, well, you're spending more money. Well, we have more, a little more money in the system. So you take out three tubes, put up three tubes, there might be uh, $10. You take out a fixture, put up a new fixture, there might be $20 to $30, depending on what was there and what is going on. Our experience but, with the annex was we had uh, originally when... Uh, like Morris bid that project, just we're going to replace all of the lights that were in there with the newer, uh, I'm probably going to mess up the terminology, but the newer LED, the, the higher efficiency lights. All as you got into it, realized we don't need that many to get the light that we want in here. So we actually oh, yeah. reduce the number of fixtures and get the added savings, you know, for, for the LED. Uh, so I suspect that's what's going to happen in this building, how many lights you have in here, but we might cut these in half or maybe by a quarter, you won't need that many to get the, the light uh, levels that we need. Now, we did walk through the sheriff's office and that lobby in there was very dark, you know, so there might be opportunity there to make that even more, you know, well Friendly. lit, but possibly even put it on a dimmer switch or something. If they do need it lower, they can lower it. But also the, this idea of the lights automatically going off when they don't need to be on and there are just a, a number of factors that go into it. Uh, so anyway, that would probably be one of those projects we could dive into right away. It might take us a little bit longer to do a review of the windows and what would be best to you know, help make those more energy efficient. I have no idea what the uh, insulation in the upper uh, levels of this building are. Are we losing a lot of heat out of the roof? I don't know, but that's something else we'll have to look at. I don't know if that's part of your program here or not. Uh, uh, you have to ask Joshua. Yeah. I'm kind of an on-the-ground person. I let them do their thing. Keep you didn't go on the roof. Not yesterday. <laughs> Not today. Ben, I, I have. I have. Don't tell consumers I've done it, but I have. We won't. Okay, go ahead, Tim. Tim just, just public we have to do what you have to do. Um, we, but we walked into the boiler room. I mean, clearly that all the um, HVAC system in there is came with the building, okay. 50 years old. So there's definitely opportunity there. Now, those are pretty high dollar items if we're replacing boilers. But that's why we want to look at it, because the ARPA funds are there. If we can afford to do it, this might be the time. Uh, in particular, if we can save you know, half of the gas consumption uh, with these boilers, it's definitely worth uh, consideration, at least, if that's yes. actually doing. Commissioner Simmons, I have one question. Say? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a contractor coming to my home doing the same thing that yes, we're doing here. Is this program still for open for individuals that are doing this to their homes? No. I put new lights in my in a rental I have, and nope. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. Yes, ma'am. I agree. <laughs> I have an, I'm having all new fixtures, but I and and he, I won't need as nearly as many as I have right. in my home now. But you, you are saving money. That's all right. Any so, other questions? What what one thing I would would recommend considering once you have once you work with Joshua, what what I could what I would what I would recommend. Okay, 
the, the building management system, there's a lot of uh, rebate money available if you look at a new building management system. What I what I propose with there's a gentleman by the name of John Namitz. He's uh, very good with building management systems. I would propose that we to either invite him here or have him on a conference call, and I can come here sometime. How do you spell his last name? N A M E T Z. E T Z Namitz. O Z in the end. Okay. N A N N A M E T Z. Yep, got it. Okay. Well, there'll be more information to come on this, Tim. Yes. Any other questions? How long has this program been in place? Uh, since it's 09. Too bad we didn't take advantage of the annex. Well, when was the annex it, completed? Uh, just in the last year. We did with the lights. We did get, uh, yeah. it, it, yeah. I don't want to use the wrong word, uh, but you know, it wasn't a rebate, but we did get that. In fact, uh, Jack Morris adjusted his bid because the lights were even less than what he had originally thought. So we did it to that extent. Now, yeah, the other parts with the insulation, I don't know if maybe it's still eligible. I mean, should we, maybe that that the would be place. that would fall under gas savings, which would be DTE. Mm -hmm. I can I can what I can do is email you um, the the young lady for DT that covers DTE. She's out of Grand Rapids. They don't have some someone so much on the ground up here. Her, her name is Drew D R U R O S S. Um, I will email her your or email you her contact. Okay. Okay, because that's worth looking at. Oh, fresh project. I mean, we literally just you can get a that. couple hundred dollars or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Anything else, commissioners? Thank you. Have a good day. Five A Walgreen Opiate Settlement. Um, Did you have something? Can I update the outstanding question now instead of? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hit the content uh, content expert up. So the administrative assistant basically says the gross revenue from data purchase for phone calls goes to us, then fifty percent goes to Stellar. This is that. Say that one more time, please. So the gross revenue from data purchase, so the data that is involved with the phone calls goes to us and then 50 percent of that then goes to stellar so we collect it it's through the system and then at the end of the month we put the numbers together if it's 100 dollars, 50 dollars goes to stellar so commissioner scott was um, so we're not a loser on this thing then absolutely not okay no and then stellar is has no objection to the attorney modifications to the contract so it should be good to go for next Thursday. It's going to be an annual contract or I think no, a five year I, contract. Yeah, you know, we left it back there, but I'm not 100 sure how long the timeline is. But I thought I read five years in there, but I could be wrong. So, any other questions? Thanks. Yep, thank you. Walgreens Opiate Settlement. You've got two pretty lengthy documents uh, in the building material. These probably look somewhat familiar. They read almost identical to what the prior settlements did, uh, but we would need a resolution to actually approve these, and then I'll get them filed. We have a September 6th deadline. This is uh, a settlement to the county worth uh, just over $435,000 that would go into that opioid fund. Questions? No, I look it over. It makes sense. Um, have you found out anything about that? Body scanner? Scanner. Yeah, yeah. body scanner. Over don't there. have a definitive answer yet, but I do have names. I have my name is now on their desk. Um, names protect guilty? Yeah. Okay. No, I mean they are attorneys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just like to know if um we can use that opening up. It, it would seem like we should be able to. Yeah. You know, with, with all this money coming in for this opiate settlement, um, is there a firm? Because, I mean, we have questions on the first idea as far as a purchase um, that is just specifically dealing with these funds and knows very, very specifics as far as how you can and cannot uh, spend these? The firm is called the Attorney General. They seem to be uh, 
everybody's pointing to them as the last definitive answer. Now, when the Opioid Committee meets next week, and we meet with uh, Amy Dolitz from MAC, uh, she's also going to give us resources or contacts that we can go through as well uh, for people who are very deeply involved with the distributions and what's eligible, and they're going to be able to help guide us. Now, one of the things, obviously, we're going to need to do is figure out what do we want to do with this? Do we want to target... Uh, uh, you know, rehabilitation, target education, what have you. But once we've got that established, I think we'll be way closer to that next week. Uh, then we'll begin to figure out who it is that we need to contact and then determine what specifically can we do with the dollars that are there. It is geared without a doubt when you read that Appendix E toward rehabilitation and prevention. Really, that's it. Prevention. Prevention. prevention, right? That'd be prevention. Well, I you're preaching to the <laughs> choir. I mean, I would all day, every day preaching. saying this is okay. I mean, it, it just makes sense. Um, and it might, I don't know. I, I think it's just the way it's being framed, and something's triggering the attorney general to say no. I, I don't know what it is because to me it's such an obvious, you know. But you know, six months from now that could change. It, right. Um the parameters could change it, what you can spend this on. It, it is definitely fluid. There, there's no question about that. But other areas we know uh, we can spend on, for instance, we I've had uh, three different um, treatment facilities already contact me just to put their name on our radar so that if we do want to direct, you know, people to uh, treatment facilities, they want to be on the list. They're aware that it's out there, you know, a number of them do, but, you know, we haven't even been to the, the point yet of looking at what the possibilities are, let alone putting a plan together, which that starts next week at our first meeting. You need to keep poking the pig about this machine in that jail. <laughs> I've got a feeling there'll be more than just well, poking. Hopefully, even with her being there next week, Amy, we can ask some her some more specifics on this, too. Right. So, okay. Great. Item B, County Building Security Policy Amendment. Uh, this is a follow-up to something that started about uh, two months ago, if I remember right. It had to do with uh, entering the building uh, during normal business, business hours versus when security is present. A very simple amendment in that section D on the first page that if there are security officers present, then everybody goes through that point. Uh, and that clears up the issue. This was put in front of the security committee last week, and there was unanimous uh, uh, consent saying that yes, this is this makes sense. So you just need this put on as a resolution, right? How have the alarms that were put on? How have them them working out? They are working. I can tell you that. Uh, they're doing the job because again, uh, the point was to when one of those doors is open that it draws people's attention and it's definitely doing that now the door down our corridor is the one that's busy and it's the one that they bring the inmates through for court and uh and that's higher traffic and uh you know michael was here earlier i asked him about you know is that becoming a nuisance he said oh, we've already tuned it out you know so they're not shocked anymore when it goes off but it's it's doing the job anybody in the corridor hears that they're turning to look um, last week, I was leaving the building here at uh, just shortly after the lunch period, uh, and we could hear that alarm going off from down there. And you know, both the security officer and I, well, what's that? And looked up, well, it was just uh, one of the inmates being taken back to the uh, jail. But that's what it was intended to do. And it's just like the AEDs. Somebody's opening up one of those boxes. We need to pay attention. And that's having the impact it needs. I was here at the end of the, you know, after the meeting and the security went around the building, checked in the building and he opened the door. We heard it. Yeah. Yep. That's just what we need. Yeah. So um, this day and age, obviously, we understand the importance of building security. It seemed like there's been some pretty petty activity going on among some, some people with us. Have, have you seen that? Um, kind of changing and people just kind of realize now let's go along with what really makes sense to to keep us all safe. Uh, I, I haven't had any pushback since we had our last meeting uh, to discuss that. Um, I, I will say it does sound like some people were getting different instructions, but once we established what the chain was, uh, we really haven't had the issue. Um, you know, the door 
down our corridor again I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how often it is used uh because law enforcement is able to come through there at any time uh so you know there's that but remember when we're hearing it it's people leaving it's not coming in because it's locked you can't get in unless you have the you know the card that you can swipe to get in uh so that's that's all it is well if you're leaving the building well we're kind of okay with that we just want to make sure nobody's sneaking in while you're doing it and it's not been an issue uh, but People going through there, I think the alarm, again, doing this job. If I'm not authorized, somebody's going to be asking questions, so I'm not going to do it. When is the next security meeting? Have you guys had a meeting lately? Yes. Last Wednesday you had one? Anything else? So you're going to put that on for a resolution? Right. Okay. Item D, Commissioner Per Diem. I think everybody got the email. Tim sent us all. My question is this, if, this if, it, if it says in statute that we, we have to be on a committee, does the county pay? Well, that's the part of what we talked about last time this came up. It's used, uh, um, planning commission is an example. Um, statute requires that a commissioner from this body obviously sit on the planning commission as well. There's a seat just for that uh, position. Uh, and as I recall our conversation a couple of weeks ago, that's in the planning commission budget. So the planning commission will pay that per diem. Okay, what we, about, I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah, we, we've got other agencies that we participate in. And one of them, and I'll just use 911 as the example. Um, I wasn't here when that um, authority evolved, but we have a commissioner sits on that uh, board. Probably it's in their articles of incorporation or in their bylaws or something that says that. So that's short of the statute saying it has to. I'm not even sure. There's your alarm. I'm not even sure that the statute uh, addresses this for 911. I've never dove into it, so I couldn't tell you. But an authority, they want a commissioner on that board. Okay, so that may be why they do that. Uh, mental health authority, we have to appoint a certain number of representatives. Uh, they just sent us a notice saying somebody is retired, need to appoint somebody, we would like to have a commissioner. So there is discretionary, clearly. It doesn't have to be a commissioner who sits on that board, uh, but they pay the per diem. So they have their own, you have it on one of those other lists, they have their own uh, per diem schedule. I think it mirrors ours. So there are a couple of different categories. And then we have others that, um, like the Michigan Works Board, I don't think there's any... Uh, mandate that says it has to be a commissioner. So you've got three different tiers there really that you're working with. So the the 901, they they do not pay. I'm on that board um, and they, they do not pay. They're under the understanding that the county pays uh, the commissioner sitting on that board. So they do not pay. I, I just think we need to make sure that we're 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 clear on this, they're clear on this, and and, and we're doing the same across the board. Um, Michigan Works is primarily, I am on that board as well, they pay mileage. Does Michigan Works pay? Mileage. And all the only thing that's on that board is, I, the only member on that board are commissioners from the surrounding, uh, from Region 7B. They pay mileage. And it's it's right here in West Branch. It's on Fridays. It's about a two hour meeting. Does does 911 require a commissioner to be on that board? <laughs> um, Jesse, at, Jesse and I had that conversation. Um, She's not aware. It's in um, the bylaws. It should be written in the bylaws. In I, was bylaws? There, I was there when we wrote the bylaws. There's a representative chosen by the supervisors and or mayors of each of the five district commissioner districts. There is a citizen at large and there is a commissioner. Then they should pay. It's in their bylaws. Do they pay a per diem now? Not to other to board members. members, yes. I don't know what that is. I don't know if this is, I, I don't know what that is. I, I haven't asked, but. No, okay. It, when it, I was on it, they didn't pay it per diem, uh, but now they do. And yeah, I agree that they should pay for the per diem. They have their own exactly. money, their own budget, everything else. I agree. So. But that's yeah. kind of what we we said before and a consensus was know. if the entity pays is it their board? Yeah. 
if the entity pays their board, they pay our commissioner the same. And if they don't pay, or it's a, com a committee of our own, then we pay for our own, just like Parks and Rec, I mean. Well, Parks the bylaws they should pay. Parks and, Parks and Rec is a committee of the county. So just like the transit is a committee so the county of the pay? county. So the county, so the county would pay the commissioner. Okay. Doesn't have to pay all the other members, but it pays the commissioner. Commissioner Wilson. Um, yeah, I'd like to just get this figured out so we can move on to more uh, county business that I feel it really needs it at this time. But it is important. I, I do. I would like to get this figured out. Um, what did you say? It's really what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I would just like to get this figured out so we can move on from this. Ag ag um, agreed. I know, like I said last time we talked, EMS, and I'm on the board there, and they pay me personally. Um, the other, if you're a member, and it's a it's a county, a county, you know, committee by the county. Um, it, I feel that we, you know, we should pay or or mileage. I just think we need to get it figured out. So, um, I do know the transit committee. Our new members did ask moving forward what what we're going to do so that's a discussion that i'll need to have too on for the transit committee so so transit should be paid for by the county we created it right right if i recall the resolution though we said that they would serve without compensation on the transit committee i'll have to revisit the resolution really? to know for i guess sure. i didn't see that it was talked about. I don't remember what was agreed upon, but it was talked about. I, I mean, I think this just needs to be spelled out. I think everybody needs to get a copy of these. All these, all okay. these, uh, the the department, these boards need a copy of this as well. That way, everybody's clear. Because right now, nobody's clear. Because other members of the transit committee have been asking about that. Right. That's what I just stated about um, per diem. But Tim, I'll get with you on that, and then I can report back to them at our next meeting. So. I just think you know we have we only have so many of these, right? So let's just take each one, figure out what it is, put it in stone, move forward. Well, I, I mean, I don't think we need to sit here and do that. No, I'm not currently. saying right now. I'm just saying that we have Kelly that can to be done right now. Can send this information to us as Whoa. more specifics. Go ahead. So the airport board also should be paid for by the county. Is that correct? They're an authority by themselves. I didn't think they were an authority. Yeah. Well, we don't. The authority doesn't pay the members anything, um, but as a county commissioner, if you if you put in, say that you attended the airport board meeting, you're going to get paid from the county. Um, I would disagree with that. In the really? resolution, it states, um, "I haven't put in for a per diem in four years, so I don't even know what these, but." I think it needs to be clear moving forward. The commissioner shall receive the same per diem as non-commissioner members appointed to the board, statutory board or agency. So if the rest of the airport board doesn't get a per diem, you wouldn't be eligible. Okay. But so we, can, we can we can re, we we can make a resolution and change that if you want. I mean, if if well, lots of commissioners want to get a per diem for it any and all committees, we can do that by a simple vote. Well, correct, and that's why I think this needs to be spelled out clear. I had 911 ask me, I've had uh, uh, not the, not not Michigan Works, but the zoning also asked me and I, I don't have the answers. So that's why I think that this needs further clarification. Yes, ma'am. And I was commissioner last time we got paid for every committee meeting we went to. Put it in, we got paid for it. So has that all changed? I think it has. Because I was not aware of it. And I don't know that before there was a written rule on it. I think it just got done. I don't know. There might have been a written rule on it years ago. But I think we just easily take each one of these boards or committees and decide right now if, if, if a commissioner gets a per diem for each one. Any of them, any or all, or part of them, or and or the rest of the committee. I mean, if if we can change, if transit committee wants, if the commissioners feel the transit committee members should get a per diem, we can do that in a resolution. 
We're the ones that set that. Nobody else, because the transit is under the county. I can't, we can't tell 911 or EMS or right, Michigan authority. Works because they're outside the county. We can't tell them what the, what they pay. But for our committees, uh, we can say that, Parks and Rec. But if Parks and Rec is statutory, what's got to be on there, then I think those people should be paid. No. They're on, the, on that committee and they should be paid for yeah. by the county. And so do we want to go through each one of these individually? Is that what you're saying, Commissioner Scott? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the simplest way to do it. Instead of just saying, we'll come back next next meeting and we'll have it all straightened out. Well, who's straightening it out? Hey, let me straighten it out for you. I'll straighten it out. <laughs> okay, so you are you on do you have a copy of it? Yeah, I got I got so we're gonna go right down this layouts. the per diem rates is what what we you have got here. Two different, you got liaisons and you got standing, standing. committee members. Standing. Which one do you guys, well, I guess we might as well go to the standing committee. That's got everything on there, correct? Yeah, sure. So we've got the insurance meets when necessary. Yeah, I think they should if they have extra meetings. Because some of these meetings that you have with commissioners isn't just, you know, we go to township meetings, then we come to these meetings, and we also do research. So I think if we go to two other meetings that were were put on like the insurance committee, law enforcement, negotiating, ordinance, personnel, and policy, transit. They should get paid. If the standing committees are, are addressed. I think that's pretty clear. If the standing committee meets for the full day, you get a $75 per, BM, per DM. If it's a half day, it's a $40 per DM. That applies to all standing committees. And and the county split. commission meeting on the same day, then you don't get paid. That's that's kind of the rub that Commissioner Simmons had run into where they had a transit meeting in the, in morning, the morning and our board meeting was at 530. Uh, our resolution states that if the committee meeting occurs on the same day as the board meeting, then there is no per diem. Uh, you know, I think that's a very valid uh, point uh, to bring out when you've got such a gap. Uh, I think that was, and just I'm taxing my memory here, but I think that came out of the idea that our law enforcement typically meets like right after a committee of the whole meeting. So that the conversation at the time was, well, we're already being paid to attend the committee of the whole meeting. It's not really fair to collect a per diem at the same time. You're you're literally going to another room. Um, right, but it's our time. It, it I, I mean, it's, you know, it's our time. I, I'll just say there's no wrong answer here. It's just a matter of defining the, the parameters. I think it needs to be the same across the board. It does shouldn't matter if there's a meeting or not a meeting. If they choose to turn it in, that's up to them. $40 for the half and $75 for the full. Yeah, I think they go to meetings, they, that should apply to all. That's what I'm saying, yes. I think that as far as if there is a meeting that day, I don't think that should matter. It's still their time. And if you don't want to put in for it, that's up to you. But, it, you know, sometimes these meetings are three hours long. And so, um, so is that, I can be playing golf. Is that for just what's under the county then? What about outside the out the what about the entities outside the county? I think we gotta they, get they pay them, we don't pay. They don't pay. I think we gotta get there. So let's go to the transit next. So we're all the way down to that covers insurance, law enforcement, negotiating ordinance enforcement, and personnel and policy, correct? Yes. Okay. So, right, agree. You guys all okay with that? Yeah, that's fine with me. Now we're on the transit. I'm looking at this list for standing committee members. You're on transit, you've concluded, right? Pardon me? You've included transit on this too. No, that's where transit is being discussed currently. I think the county should pay. That's our, that's okay. That's your opinion. To all board members? Yeah. Or just commissioners. Or just commissioners. Well, we're getting paid. They should get paid too, I think. I, 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 do. I agree with you. And that could, that could uh, play an impact as far as if they want to continue or if we can find other board members. I, I agree. That's why I think this needs to be spelled out better. Because, I mean, we, we've been asked, Mr. Wiltsy and I have both been asked about this, and um, I think they should be paid. It's not as though we got 15 people on that board. You have how many? Three. Five, don't we? Five. Three outside members, right? Three, yeah. Just yeah, five. Three and commissioner. Five total. Three others. What do, you, what do they sound like? I mean, you guys are getting up they, they would like They would like something. So what do you guys think is fair? 
how far away are they coming? Uh, how long all, are you meeting? They're all local. They're all local once a month. How long do they last? Um, on average, they've been probably hour and a half. Okay. Hour and a half, probably. Sometimes a little longer. It depends on what we discuss. It on the topics, yeah. So, opinions? Commissioner Wilson? They, they should pay. $40. Yeah. yeah. $40. Well, for meeting? Yep. Yeah. Across the board? Yes. I don't have a crossword. Now, I got it. I got a question, not about transit. Hey, we're getting there. You're good with transit? <laughs> yeah. Do you I'm have that? Do you have transit. any questions? I'm still going. On. West Branch Community Airport. We got uh, Commissioner Scott and Commissioner Simmons. Uh, and and Rex on that also. Okay. Because there's three people from, from the county. Okay. Now, this, this, uh, this is kind of the question I got. Like, <laughs> Rex, an employee. So she get a per diem on top of that. She's already getting yeah. a salary. Because if it's not just this committee, the sheriff and under sheriff attend the law enforcement committee. Yeah. Where where do you stand on that, Tim? Here's the caution. If you pay a per diem, let's use Breck as the example, as clerk sitting on the transit right. board, this is going to equate to salary, which is Important to distinguish because for an elected official, you cannot reduce the pay uh, during the term of office. So if you tack that on, that's part of the pay. Oh, okay. And so that would continue. So you wouldn't be able to reduce the per diem for the clerk ever, at least during the term. Right. So you get another crack at once every four years if you needed to do something different. I, I, I'm like we're not talking just millions wondering. of dollars. I have a question, but I think right. Yeah, like but I think that. right now we're we're back to just talking about the commissioners okay. and these. Okay. Transit just didn't have anything set up at all. Right. Right. I get it. So the community airport, we've got Commissioner Scott and Commissioner Simmons. Do you guys currently collect a per diem? If you choose to. We used to, but I haven't even submitted for anything yet. For this will be the eighth one. Submitted any any any. What is so you don't know what the airport is currently doing? Pardon me. What there is, the is no there is no pay for any of the members. Paul Paul's even on as mayor of the city, and they don't collect anything. We don't collect anything, and our managers already being paid. But Tim, you said according to that the airport would be paying commissioners or the county. Yeah, the way that conversation went two weeks ago, if there were a per diem being paid because they're an authority, they would pay it. It wouldn't be the county. Right. Now, having said that, as a board, you can decide, well, we're assigning a commissioner and the 7540 formula applies. That's totally up to you. But then that's understand coming out of your budget, not the airport. Otherwise, the way your resolution is set up, you're entitled to the equal per diem to whatever any other board member receives. And if that's zero, that's what you get. So does a commissioner have to serve on the uh, what, the community, the airport? Yes. Yes. Two members, two commissioners Pass have it. to. Pass so it. what's your thoughts as far as? And if we have to, we should get paid for it. By whom? The authority. By the county. No, the authority. EMS, just like I, you know, I'm an EMS, EMS authority, the EMS pays the board members. Pays me. Well, it's that's the discussion right now. Should the authority pay it or should the county pay it? When the contract was made up, and I was part of that uh, bylaws, bylaws thing, uh, there had to be uh, two commissioners, and then uh, Breck was part of it, and then uh, the mayor was part of it, uh, and then we had a couple others outside citizens that were on it. Just one, and that was a requirement. What? There's to be on that board. For two commissioners to serve on that board. There's three there's three three county representatives. Yes. Three city representatives. Yes. Uh, the, it has to be two from the council and the city manager. And two commissioners and the clerk. And then one citizen at large. That's Terry Hodges. Right, and it's our board that selects him. The, the 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 advisory board or the airport board selects the citizen at large. I, I think we're getting away from the question. The question is, 
It says the authority pay the commissioners if they choose to turn in a per diem or not, or I does the county? Pardon me? I think we should because the county and the city made that contract together as far as the airport went. Right. And they didn't include, they did not include compensation. Compensation. So I don't, I don't see how we can make the airport, the airport pay. Right. We're going to have per diem. So it's going to have to come out of the county, county here. The same way in the city where, but it's a different, but out, it is a separate end. Because we both own that, that airport. The city doesn't pay. Okay. <laughs> so, you guys agree? You guys agree the county should pay? Yep. Uh, Oakmont Commission on Aging. How often are you guys meeting? Once a month. You get a, do they pay you for that? Pay something. Do they Violate pay you? something. Do they pay you? Yeah. So you're paid, you're that, that's taken care of then? Yep. District Health Department number two? There's they two members? You get paid. So you're paid. Mileage and per diem. Okay. Uh, Community Corrections Advisory Board. I don't think they are uh, mothballed at the moment. Mothballed, yeah. Nine one one emergency dispatch. Do uh, we do not get the the board gets paid, but the I do not get reimbursement from them. Looking for direction. I think that we should ask them to pay you. Yep. They have a budget. Yep. Okay. Uh, Agricultural slash MSU Advisory Council. Uh, no, no payment. Are they paying any of their members? I'd have to ask that. I don't. How often are you meeting? Um, it's uh, bi-monthly. Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly, mainly Zoom, twice a year in person. I can, uh, I can find out. Oh, Zoom, you said. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Zoom at um, bi-monthly and then twice a year in person. Okay. DHS? Uh, DHS is monthly, um, and I am not getting paid. And I'm not sure if their board members are paid or not. Is there a mandate that we have to be on that? I was looking for one. I couldn't find it, but it could be buried in some rule uh, at DHS. You know, um, <clears throat> used to be long. Then they had us on there because we give them like $5,000 a year. But it, um, I personal opinion, I don't know why you sit on that meet, sit on that board. I really don't know why. Mr. Walton? Um, I mean, you know, obviously they uh, they do a lot of good things for the county. I think it is nice to for us to kind of be aware of what they're doing. It's interesting to see the numbers, the amount of cases for certain certain things going on. Um, I know the biggest thing I've been help with them so far is, is they've had issues with their building. And I'm just- I can't hear you. The, the biggest thing that I've been so far to help them with is they have issues with their building and I've just been helping meet with the guy to make sure things are getting done. But but again, I mean, I I, I do feel that it's, it's good for us to know what they're doing. I mean, they, they are doing a lot of valuable things within the county for our residents. And, <clears throat> I think the county should pay. Hey. They're not in a, they're, they're, they're not a. Do you think the county should pay? I do. They used to pay. I think the MSU Advisory Council, I guess they have a, I, you'll find out if, will you find out, Tim, if they get any reimbursement? How many people are on that board? It's quite a few. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, sometimes Zoom meetings, there's seven, eight, nine people. Sometimes there's less, sometimes there's more. In person, I think we had eight to 10 people that showed up over in Ross Common for that. I'll follow up. I, I'll just say I'll be surprised if they do pay. Yeah, okay. I'll follow up and confirm. Follow up on that DHS too. The EDC? At EDC, we meet monthly. And of course, I'm very involved with the workshops. I got a workshop meeting after a law enforcement meeting today. Uh, no, no payment. What's your thoughts on that? Those meetings are quite lengthy. Oh, yeah. They're typically in the evening. I, oh, yeah. I, I was on there before. I mean, I think, uh, I think that uh, that forty dollar payment would be county. Right way to go. Yeah. 
County, correct, is what you're saying? You guys have any issues with that? What about DHS? What did we come up with DHS? County. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Scott, did you have anything? No, I'm fine. Uh, East Michigan Council of Governments. Uh, I don't know if they pay or not. I haven't been to a meeting. I, I sometimes look on the internet, but um, there doesn't even seem to be any requirement that you attend, really. And, and on that subject, I did get an email from Penny Paella over at uh, EDC asking if the board would consider appointing her as an alternate to that board because she does participate in what they call their red team, which focuses on economic development. So she's already attending. Which which meeting is that? MCOG, the MCOG meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, emergency medical service. You said they pay. Yeah, we meet monthly, and um, I actually get a check in the mail. Uh, fair board, there's nobody serving on that because that wasn't something that was mandated either. Correct, Tim? Right. Uh, Hardwood Lake. They we meet twice a year, and they pay for that. They do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, local emergency planning committee. There wasn't been any meetings or anything on that. What about Hardwood Lake? They, uh, that's me. We meet twice a year and they pay. Okay. They're an association. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, regarding the local emergency planning committee, I mean, basically, you know, I'm a CERT member. We do a lot of those things at those meetings, but that is all volunteer efforts. Uh, so who's on that one? No, I mean, who pays on that one? But uh, there's no payment; it's all volunteer. Okay. Do you, Do you have any opinion on that? I think I think we could stay that way. Okay. Michigan Association of Counties, Mac, Commissioner Simmons. I think it should be uh, volunteer. I'm still on that, but I sent them an email to take me off because I had conflicting with uh, Nemska and uh, Mac. So I couldn't go to Lansing. Tim, you've gone to Lansing, though, have you not with Matt? I, I have. Um, you are, I know, listed on, I think, you're one of their committees. Uh, we just got their annual bill, and you'll see a communication at your meeting from next week from Matt. And you are listed as a member. See, and I sent them an email to, to take me off yeah. because of that conflict. And I sent that even before I became a commissioner. Well. I can tell you, they, they think you're still on it, so we I can follow up for you. I, I would appreciate it, because that means I'm not attending these meetings. That makes it look bad on me, but I did send them an email. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, MAC, obviously, is very, I think, very beneficial to us. Tim, wouldn't you say that it's important to be represented? Um, you know what? If they'll have you, I think, first of all, yes, on the representation. And second, if you are on that uh, group, even on a subcommittee, it will be very valuable for you. And you get a lot of input from around the state, and it's they're very informative. And I think I was on the, the finance. I was on the finance committee. I'm sure. Uh -huh. It just didn't work with your schedule. No, was... because Nemska and Mac on Friday. We're, Friday. Meeting, we're meeting at the same time. See, I have a meeting tomorrow with Nemska in Sheboygan, so there's no way I could be at the Mac meeting. Yeah. Are those by Zoom? Mac meetings? I think they do a hybrid. I think you can zoom in. So I thought that's what Brad did. It could be. We don't need a resolution to change members. No, 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 no. I, we're just talking about, we're just well, talking. We do that wham bam right now. If what? Brenda doesn't want to be on Mac, but. Well, it's not that I don't want to be on well, it. I know it, it conflicts. I get it. Yeah. But Charlie would. Is like he, did he volunteer? I didn't hear him say he wanted to be. I just heard him say it was beneficial. I didn't volunteer, but I think it's very just beneficial did. one of us did. I just volunteered him. <laughs> and I can imagine Mac would be. Mac has a, a lot of really smart people that really that's that why I volunteered us. Does, uh, do they pay? Do they do you that I've never gotten a check from I was actually on one of their subcommittees a few years ago and it was totally volunteer. I'll bring it up. So I'm off and he's on, right? Cross my name off. <laughs> Northern Michigan County Association, third Monday at 945. That's you, Commissioner Simmons. No, I've been that either. <laughs> those are those are Zoom, well, hybrid. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, and I, I do when I'm here, I do uh, tune in and listen. Same type of thing. We're very valuable stuff from other counties. And they actually have a 
program at every meeting. So it might be, you know, some new piece of legislation. I know when the whole Camp Grayling thing was going on, they had a presentation for that. Uh, and I know they try to get somebody on some timely topic at every meeting. Uh, Medical Control Authority, there hasn't been any meetings on that, or I don't, I don't know anything on that. I've heard nothing. Planning Commission, um, the members get paid, the commissioner does not. So, question. Well, that's right. Uh, that's under the county, but it has its own budget. So, I would say, uh, I would say start filling out. They pass around that. Form they they do, I and, and they told me not to because the county will will reimburse. Well, I think since it has its own its own budget and it's paying its other members out of that budget, then I think they ought to pay the commissioner out of that budget. If it's any consolation, it's all general fund, both it is. yours and, okay. and theirs. So it's coming from the general fund, no matter who. Okay. I think, it's, I think we should be the same. But they're only paying mileage, I think, aren't they? I don't think so. I don't know. I, they just signed a piece of paper. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't see anything on mileage on that. They just signed something that goes around. I don't, I don't have any idea. I think it's, we should be consistent and come out of the county. All right. Okay. Keep it out of the county. I agree. Uh, nothing on Right for River, two Keep numbers, it. unknown meeting. We haven't had any meetings on those neither. Uh, roads and bridges. What do you guys do for the road commission? Uh, well, we both attended yesterday. I mean, we attend quite consistently there every twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no payment for me. Opinion? Do the other board members get payment? Well, they're a, they're an elected board. It's a three, right? Board yeah, it's a three elected board. And so, yes, they are compensated, but it's salary. You know, it's a salary. Nobody there gets a per diem. Um, you guys are taking I, time out of your day. It's yeah, I would say I would say pay the per diem. It's just that I haven't put in for per diem. Oh. So, but moving it, forward, going, moving forward, yeah, through the should. county. So yes, yeah, county pays that. Yeah, you don't have any authority to make the road commission pay because of their status as the that's true. Road commission, right? Right. So, so agreed through the county. Solid waste. Uh, I'd say yes. I know I've never, we've never had a meeting, but we have been talking about uh, this new plan that be coming up, and uh, uh, and I really like to take a look at all our waste uh, for the county. Because we have, I think, three different companies taking care of different entities in the county. You would say yes. To so what? I would say yes if there was a a meeting. A meeting. In the county. In yeah, okay. but it'll be in the county. Uh, Asabo Valley Community Mental Health. Right now, that we don't have a commissioner that serves on that. We don't. Yeah. No, uh, Commissioner Sir or Mark Serbrook. Yeah. Continue. Yes. I saw an email in there that we're the only one that doesn't have a commissioner on there. So I talked to Tim and I said, if there's no one else, I'd, I'd give it a go. From Asaba Valley? Mm hmm It meets on the fourth Monday at 5 p.m. Do you know how they pay their members? Mm -hmm. Do you know how they pay their members? I have no idea. They have a same, they mirror our 75 full day, 40 half day. Would they, they pay, pay commissioners? They, they pay everybody on their board. Okay. Okay, okay. So, and this, this vacancy that came up, have Brenda would fill that? So she's asking. No, I don't have a problem with it. Anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay. So, but that vacancy that's up, that she would fill it. Right. I'll put a resolution together for Thursday and let them know. All and it would end in 2025. If you're going to be Al Evans, the place I'm taking, right? Right. Yes. right. If you can't, let me know and I will. I will. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel it's very wise to have a commissioner on that. Yes. Uh, Nemska, Nemska pays you. Yes. Mileage, yeah. Yep. And it's it's pretty uh Michigan Works pays Sting. We haven't had any uh it's every three months one meeting. Uh the one last Friday was canceled. Um I uh I, I'm fine with not no payment for that, but I think it should come come from the county. We're asking you to do yeah. it. I I agree. I mean, I know you what you're fine with court, right now, but it. the next commissioner, I mean, this needs right, to be right. spelled out. That's a bigger picture. Absolutely. Which one are we on right now? Sorry. Sting. Tony? Yes. Okay. 
substance abuse. I don't think there's a commissioner on, correct? What about Michigan Ward? It's Ron they Cook. Pay. They okay. pay. They Ron, pay mileage. Ron Cook, which his name is still there. He's always asked to be on that. He's never put in for a per diem, I don't believe. I don't know. I don't think he's ever asked for one. If 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 he does, I think we should probably give it to him. But the county? The county. But so who's the entity that runs? Which that? one are we talking about now? Substance abuse. Yeah. County. It's called uh, like Northern Michigan Agency or something. It's a multi-county uh, efforts, and they do uh, operate with funds from. I would say it's the cigarette tax. I could be wrong, but there's a, a oh, right convention uh, uh, and visitors tax, and that's a check that the county receives, but we're mandated to give fifty percent of that to this Northern Michigan Agency group. So uh, they probably are acting like an authority if they're not an authority that's set up by the state. So I would suggest in that case, if there are per diems, that they probably would be the appropriate one to pay. Okay. It. Okay. Christine? Or substance substance yeah. abuse. Okay. They. Building security. Those are quarterly meetings here here in this mm -hmm. office. County. I agree. Yeah. Can can we go back up to Commissioner Simmons? What was that one that you haven't been able to the NMCA, Northern Michigan County Association? Say Is that one more. The Northern Michigan Counties Association, NMCA. So Tim, you have a little involvement with them, and it sounds like that is probably another committee that we should have some involvement, right? I mean, especially these are our bordering counties. Right. Have you been attending those meetings? Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything from them? Any emails, any contact, anything? Oh, well, you haven't even heard emails or nothing. I know they have your information. They usually do a blast about uh, once every six weeks with their meeting agenda and yeah. in the Zoom link and all that. Have you received that? Yeah. Oh, you have that too. Have you had any contact with them? No. Letting them know you couldn't attend. <laughs> I just, is there, is there, you took all Sablon, excuse me. Um, I'd be willing, because it's kind of hand in hand with the, the Mac, I'd be willing to take that. Say that one? I'd be willing to take that. Take one. Northern Michigan Counties Association. That's what we're talking That's about. Fine. Take me off. I, I've got to excuse myself, but Tim, before, can you send us a copy of all of this <laughs> moving forward? And then we will to each one of these organizations as well. That way, everybody's 100% clear. And you'll have, is, will there be a resolution for this? This way it's in writing? Certainly, we can do that. I think know. that way it's formal. Absolutely. Um, just at a point on NMCA, they do when they meet, it literally is a morning commitment. So I'll start at like 930 and they go to 12 every time consistently. In fact, they're usually having to cut people off um, it's not in small. that. So, it's, so you understand it's a hybrid. So they usually meet over at Ross Common. Uh, I think it's Ross Common Township Hall, I think it is. Yes. But they've always got the Zoom link, so that's always an option. And that's what I do. I sit at my desk, kind of like what some of our employees are doing here, so I can hear what the conversation is. You have to sum up here because they will call on you. Just uh, a warning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's very informative, but it's packed. It's you know, wall to wall with information. I think it's important we get back consistent. I have to excuse myself. Commissioner Simmons, you have the floor. Oh, where are we now? Have we been, um, where are we as far as medical control authority? That's Jenny's. Jenny's Jenny. in a medical. Control. Any meetings or anything? Just leave it alone then. Well, I think we need. I think we need to point it out. I think it's something the county is asking us to do. I think it should be paid for the county if they, if they okay. might choose to turn it in. County. Um, for the NMCA, I would suggest you do the same because of the commitment. I mean, it's for sure you're going to be committing time, and I think it's fair that you receive a per diem for that. Okay. They don't pay. I, I know that for sure. Okay, county. What about Max? They pay? Not typically. So that's county too. I agree. I'm making you a rich man here, Mr. Olsen. <laughs> so the people Thank you. For it. I might pay his gas. Yeah, yeah I got to go critter Sheboygan tomorrow. Yeah. 
Oh, I'll probably be driving by Braille. Have we left anything off? The only ones that are left off, we'll need to follow up on like the medical control. I mean, we don't know, they don't meet. So, but we already said the 7540 or the per diem rate on that. Um, the LEPC you said was voluntary, right? Which ones? The LEP, the local emergency. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> For the medical control authority, we said county. For the planning commission, we said county, right? Right, right. Yes. Yep. For roads and bridges, we said county. For solid waste, we said county. For mental health, they pay. For NEMSCA, they pay. Michigan Works, evidently, they pay. Direct team, county. We pay. Business abuse, they pay. Building security, we pay. Okay. And then for the airport, County pays, Parks and Rec County pays, District Health Department, they, Health Department pays. What's Community Corrections Advisory Board? They are currently uh, not exempt. They, they call them off ball, but they're, they've suspended their operation because they were funded by a grant and uh, grant okay. monies that the state. And no one offered. found it anyway. Right. 911 emergency pay, they pay MSU Advisory Council. We're going to yeah. follow up on that. Following up on that one. Okay. Department of Human Services, county pays. Um, EDC, county pays. MCOG. We're going to follow up on that, too. Okay. Emergency Medical Service, they pay. EMS pays. Fair Board, they pay. Hardwood Lake, they pay. Did I get those all correct? Yep. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. The 211 board is not uh, on that list. No, it isn't. No, there's not. The 211 board is not appointed. Mm -hmm. 211 board? Appointed. Oh, you were appointed by the county to go on it? By the county, by resolution to represent the county. Oh. 211 board. So okay. If you want to reflect that on, oh, there's no payment. That's regional. How so what do we do with that one then? Quarterly. Again, that's a tricky one because you have an employee right representing you. So it would be but there is no pay. So leave but it you that. you can submit mileage though if you go to a meeting. Yeah, it's it's all I think we, we've done one in person since COVID hit. So we're just getting back to in person. We've always had the option hybrid Zoom, which is usually right. What do we want to do that? Well, it's my a volunteer basically yeah. as well. Okay. So mileage is allowed. What do they need? Uh, normally they're down in Midland. Midland is usually the meeting place for in person. Really? Dual mix. Majority of people participate. Do they pay you mileage? No. It's a volunteer board. It's all the way that they. Do you take a police car with you? No. You may want to think about that. Oh, well, I said most of the time I have to do it. <laughs> so, so they're awesome. faster. Oh, we used to take a police car everywhere. And you put it in for mileage. No, don't quote me on that. You don't, I don't want your test. <laughs> <laughs> don't quote me on that. Joke. Okay, we're all set with this then? Everybody happy? Yep. yep. Let's move forward. Okay. Budget. Any public? Budget. Oh, yeah. Budget. We made budget D. Budget. Uh, the reason I wanted it on there is because uh, we have to approve the budget by September 30th. And I know uh, our administrator, comptroller, is working on that budget. Yeah. Um, I tend to have i'm going to work through the weekend and tend to have you a draft monday or tuesday and then i'll finally be caught up but uh, watch me i'll take copious notes to point things out where we're making changes there's some changes in some of the revenue lines michael mentioned one here today uh so I'll try to focus you on those major changes but you'll see it it'll be a thick document because you'll have all the departments listed uh, but i'm 
really looking at uh, Monday or Tuesday at the very latest to have that in your hands. Can you give us a hard copy? If you want a hard copy, I can print a hard copy. I, I would like to have a hard copy. It's easier for me to, to flip the pages than it is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the on the computer. I don't even like turning my computer on. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, but that's me. I like a hard copy. I'll run them. Everybody get a hard copy, and you'll have a one on the computer. Well. And it'll say draft on it. Oh, yeah, it'll be All draft. Right. Well, we just don't want to go wrong. Exactly. Yeah, this is the budget. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So we get How are we setting right okay. now for the budget as of today? I, I wish this I could tell you. Not 24. And that's the other part that I'm, I'll be working on. So next week you'll have a July 31 update, and we've got to do a third quarter that too. So I'm hoping to have all that together for you. And then I'll tell you now, the way it's looking right now, I did go through the July, I'm sorry, the June, and we were okay there, but there have been a lot of changes, but a lot of expenses and so on that have come through. And we also uh, spent uh, a lot of time this week cleaning up the vehicle purchases and getting the ones over to the ARPA fund that belong there versus they were actually put in the 301 and the sheriff's budget and the road patrol. So we got that cleaned up too, but that's a big impact on what you're seeing. So how much ARPA money would I have left? Well, it should be the same amount that we've been quoting. Is it 1.7 million, whatever it Something is? Like that, yeah. yeah, these were all uh, uh, approved with resolutions. It's just that when the bills came in, you know, it's one thing to see the purchase of the vehicle come in. That's pretty obvious. And that went to ARPA like it's supposed to. But there are other things that come into it, like uh, radios and radar guns, and they come in and they look like regular equipment. But in the resolution, we said all that equipment is what we're approving as well. Uh, and that's supposed to be over the ARPA. So we just got to do the accounting to move it back where it belongs versus where it's been parked. It makes the general fund look much better. And it also puts it, the right accounting into the ARPA the way it's supposed to. So the bottom line, uh, money that's available should not change because those costs were already built into the resolution. Okay. The thing with the ARPA money, we're, we're waiting on doing anything with the rest of the ARPA money until we find out what the cost expenditures would be to... Um, Make make these buildings, including transit, um, more proficient as far as utilities go. Right. Okay. So Tim, to clarify, currently one point seven million, but five hundred thousand of that is already allocated. Um, I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me, but I think we included that in the calculation, so that it was maybe not. I just got to check it to make sure. Um, but we had already committed it, so I think it's already Out of there. part of it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Any public comment? Any public comment on the TV screen? Any public comment from people sitting in this room? No public comment. We need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayhew, yeah. I mean, Mr. May, yeah, Mr. Mayhew made the motion. Mr. Wilson seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Oh, I know there's birthday cake in my office. Do you want to have a piece? Uh -huh.